Welcome back to Wyatt Science. Today we're going to be making a 1 inch PVC sugar engine that I currently use for my rockets. So let's get started. First we'll be using a 1 inch PVC coupling, a 3 quarter inch piece of 1 inch PVC, and a 1 inch PVC cap. Next we're going to drill some quarter inch shear holes for the section of PVC that will become the divergent end of the nozzle. These holes will help our concrete have more area to adhere with the PVC and will prevent our nozzle from eroding too much during flight. You want to remove the excess plastic and burrs with some sandpaper and I also rough up the inside and outside of the PVC to help the glue adhere better later. You want to pick up some 5 16 inch by one and a quarter inch fender washers and this will help keep our throat diameter during our flight and you want to drill that hole out to three eighths of an inch yeah this sixteenth of an inch makes a big difference I mean this is rocket science after all next you'll want to sandwich our divergent PVC piece with our metal washer inside the coupling and apply some regular PVC glue Prior to this video, I made this cement plug to a 45 degree angle. I've used this plug for all my nozzles and it can be quite fragile. If you can find some frosting metal tips, this will also work very well. Comment down below if you'd like to see how to make one of these negative castings for our nozzle. I'm using Rocktite anchoring cement. I've had great luck with this cement. It cures to the touch in about 10 to 15 minutes. It has proven quite tough against the hot gases released by the engine in flight. Mixing the concrete can be a tricky process. You don't want the concrete to be too wet or it may take forever to dry. But if it's too dry, you won't be able to get it through the throat diameter. So when pouring the concrete, I find it a good idea to bang the nozzle on a hard flat surface to release any air bubbles. This is very important. An air bubble in your nozzle will destroy it during flight. After about 10 to 15 minutes, you can remove the plug and inspect the divergent side of the nozzle. If everything looks good, flip it over, mix up some more concrete, and start pouring the convergent side of the nozzle. Now I use the same plug as I did before, and after it's dried, I use a drill bit to get a good angle for our convergent side. Next, we want to pour just a small amount of concrete in our 1 inch PVC cap. Unless this will act as a good bulkhead and will help to stop any burnout in the engine at the top. My PVC caps have a small ridge near the bottom and I fill the concrete just past this line. At this time I normally rough up the inside of the PVC coupling where our engine casing will be glued. Rough up our PVC cap so our glue can adhere better. You'll want to let the concrete dry at least 24 hours before gluing the engine casing. I've cut a piece of 1 inch PVC to 14 inches and I've made this alignment jig for our coring rod. It's a 1 inch PVC coupling with a piece of plywood that fits snugly with a half inch hole in the center for the coring rod. Now at this point I give a good coat of high temperature RTV sealant to both the PVC cap and our PVC nozzle. This is to protect both parts from the extreme heat uh, that both parts will be exposed to during flight and it's also a good idea to let the, the sealant dry before pouring your fuel. We only want to burn the fuel, we don't want to, we don't want our fuel to be mixed with anything else. Um, I find that a newer can, a WD-40, works better than one that's been laying around for years. You want to make sure that the coring rod is good and lubricated. You really don't want this thing to get stuck in the engine, it'll ruin all your hard work. I know. Anyways, once the sealant is dry, we can glue our engine casing to the nozzle, and now the real fun begins. For this engine, I weigh out 208 grams of potassium nitrate, 54.4 grams of powdered sugar, and 57.6 grams of corn syrup. Now, I make my fuel right on top of the stove, and I've done this so many times I feel 100% comfortable and safe doing this, and if you don't, you could pick up a burner that plugs into the wall. Uh, you could use a flat iron grill or something similar. If you're really worried, use something with electric heat. Comment down below if you're worried about accidental ignition, exploding, or anything like that. I have a lot of good research showing that this will not happen unless you just outright do something stupid, so don't do that. All right, this setting 
is probably specific to my stove and all I did, I put a saucepan in the stove with some water and found a setting at which the water was near boiling but not boiling. And this is a good temperature to make our fuel at. Make sure you have everything you're going to need for this step. The fuel is going to dry pretty quick and you don't have a lot of time to work with it before it starts to get too hard. As long as you take your time, you do it right the first time, everything will go smooth. The fuel inside the engine takes longer to harden up as the temperature can't escape as easily as if it was just sitting on the counter. I also put a healthy wad of paper towel in the nozzle throat to stop any fuel from dripping out. First, mix the potassium nitrate and sugar together. Make sure it's mixed very well. Uh, I put the, the corn syrup on the stove and let it heat up. Once there becomes some bubbles at the bottom, this is when you can add your fuel to the mix. Now once you put it in the pan, make sure you keep mixing it. Don't let the don't let it sit on the heat without being mixed. Um, not because it's going to ignite, but you want a good even mixture and good temperature distribution. You don't want to create any hot spots. Now once the fuel has become the consistency of yogurt, you're ready to pour your fuel into the engine. Slowly pour the fuel in. Try not to spill any. And it's a good idea to do this away from any heat source or open flame. Once all your fuel is inside the engine, place the alignment jig over top of the engine and insert the coring rod all the way to the engine nozzle. Now at this point, I remove the paper towel. I ensure the coring rod is seated good in the throat diameter and I remove any fuel that may have been forced out the throat diameter. I normally give the coring rod a, a few good spins before removing it and as long as you lubed up that thing good, it'll slide out no problem and then leave the engine sitting upright to dry. Now once the engine has cooled down and the fuel has started to cure, you can glue the top of the PVC cap to the engine. Congratulations, you've made an extremely powerful sugar engine. My calculations put this thing somewhere between an H and an I in terms of thrust. Now please, everyone, if you try this at home, use some extreme caution when igniting this engine. I have many videos on my YouTube channel of testing this particular engine. I've tested some bigger ones, and you can watch how much power they really have. And sometimes they have a little destructive power too if, you know, they fail. Kato. Uh, be safe and be smart. This is a science project, and it's meant to educate and inspire people. Please keep it that way. Thanks for everyone for watching this video. I currently have a rocket ready for launch if the weather cooperates. I'll be uploading that launch soon. I also have a digital engine scale that I'm working on and I will up upload a video of this particular engine on that test stand as soon as it's up and running. So thanks everyone for watching. Please leave a comment down below. Like and share this video with friends. And please subscribe for more science videos. Thanks everybody and we'll see you again.